And it's good to see John and colleagues here today, again, supporting the NHS staff 30 years on down the line. Our next speaker is from the Rotherham of the Doncaster Care UK. They are a group of health service workers who are under attack from a private uh, contractor who's taken over a local authority contract and sought to reduce their terms and conditions. I'm not going to say no more about the door because we're going to ask Roger Hunt, who's come up all the way from Doncaster, to join us today to share with us the details. Thank you, John. Give John a warm welcome. It's Roger Hunt. I was close. And I can't do what John's just done, so I'll have to write it down on paper, I'm afraid so. <laughs> Morning and thanks for inviting me to speak today. 32 years has passed since the last time the nurses came out on strike. The level of discontent is at an all-time low, with Jeremy Hunt's decision to go against the Pay Review Board's recommendation of a 1% pay increase. Just like us, the Care UK strikers, you made this decision with a lot of soul-searching and a heavy heart. But as the cost of living continues to rise, and our salaries are sh uh, shrinking. Finally, we have all said this cannot continue. So be it four hours or 84 days as our strike presently stands at for our quality of <laughs> As advocates for the sick and the most vulnerable in society, we all recognize as being in immediate danger and at risk as a consequence of government policies putting profit before people. I'm sure that most of you here today are aware of what the Care UK strike is all about and what we represent, the dropping standards of the private sector and the defence of the NHS from the pariahs of the private sector who perceive the people I have cared for as commodities to be bought and sold for profit. This is morally reprehensible in a civilised society. <laughs> we the Care UK strike is our living proof that the NHS is not safe in the condemned coalition's hands. It is being dismantled brick by brick right in front of our eyes. For me, I am losing £500 a month. That is my mortgage. Many of my colleagues are leaving their chosen professions as they simply cannot survive on such drastically reduced terms and conditions and don't want to work for an employer with a remit profit before people. In recent times, four of my colleagues have left with a combined length of service of over 100 years. How can you replace that level of knowledge, compassion, empathy and experience? The short answer is you can't. They are heartbroken. These attacks on essential public services like the NHS, the fire service, the teaching profession, the railway workers, the list goes on and on, is an attack to suppress the working classes, creating a return to the Victorian values of the have and the have not. This is what the Tories represent negotiating a trade agreement behind closed doors, the TTIP agreement. Everyone needs to be aware of what this actually means. An erosion of civil liberties, job losses. We have food banks on the streets in one of the richest economies in the world. One in five in work below, living below the poverty line, whilst cabinet ministers are millionaires and preparing to offer themselves the 11% pay increase. CEOs of big business companies on £800,000 salaries. The disproportionate distribution of wealth is becoming wider. We simply must stand together in unity and say enough is enough. <laughs> the corruption and lawlessness of the condemned coalition government has no bounds. We are fast becoming the 51st state of America where the pursuit of wealth is the holy grail and we are losing our national identity. We, the working classes, must stand together to make this country of ours great again. I am convinced that if, we, if, if the question was asked to the people I have cared for, for over 30 years, do you, do you back what, uh, what we are striking for? I know the answer would be, you fight on. For me, we are fighting for the professional futures, the well-being of the people I have cared for all my life, and most importantly of all, for our next generations. I have a son who turns 18 in January. What legacy are we leaving behind for them? Zero hour contracts, minimum wage, creating a transient workforce. I don't think there will be anybody of the next generation working in an industry throughout the entirety of their professional lives. We simply cannot allow these scenarios to unfold. 
In recent negotiations with our employers, they put an offer on the table of 2% for UK UK employers. And wait for it, nothing for O2 paid across NHS employees. Then had the audacity to announce to the press that we were unreasonable, the mind boggles. We the Care UK strikers are aware that we are a test case being watched by all and are aware that if we fail, the ramifications for the public sector and the trade union movement will be catastrophic. So we must all stand together to stop the race to the bottom of the private sector pariahs, stealing essential public services. The overwhelming support of the great British public has been amazing, and it has made us all very humbled as they recognise our fighters for all our sakes. We are Yorkshire folk, we are like a dog with a bone, we simply will not give up. Nye Bevan said that the NHS will only last as long as there are people prepared to fight for it, that is what we stand for. <laughs> On Friday next, me and Trev, who stood alongside me here, with one of the colleague, are meeting our MP, Ed Miliband, at his constituency headquarters in Doncaster, where we will be asking him publicly to back his constituents in our fight for a fair living wage. As of yet, 84 days into our dispute, he has been conspicuous by his absence. If he intends using the salvation of the NHS as part of his manifesto to regain power for Labour at the next general election next year, what better platform could there be than to throw his, his support behind his constituents, the Care UK strikers? We shall see what he says on Friday. We are standing here as living proof that the British Bulldog spirit is alive and well, and that the apathy and indifference of some who are not prepared to stand up and be counted are in the minority. Can you imagine our forefathers having their, Id having their ideology, the, Tom the Tommies of the Great War, the suffragettes, the pilots of the Battle of Britain? We'd all be speaking German by now. So we must stand up together in the face of adversity, for we have the moral high ground, united in solidarity, we will prevail for all our sakes. So keep the faith, and most importantly of all, never surrender. As Roger has said, the Doncaster campaign is a fight for all of us. I do need a calculation booklet here.